guys, how are you doing? It's Papa here. Now in today's video, we're going to be reviewing Stranger Things Season 4, Volume 2. Now, before we get into this, I do want to give a spoiler warning, just as I did last time, I think. Now, with that being said, let's get into it. So first off, the length of these last two episodes is outstanding. You've got, like, two hours and a half or something. The music, like the music in, um, they use, like, lots of ones from trailers like at the end of the um, episode 8 and they also replay that um, Kate Bush is rush running up that hill oh man they also play that song um, I forgot the name of it but it's um, the one you know in season 1 at the end when Hopper and Joyce sing Will and he was like brought back to life and I'll get to it in a moment when they used it because it was heartbreaking yeah you can you can already guess where, I'm, where we're going with this so next up to talk about the deaths oh my god Last season we lost Billy and I actually did feel sorry for him because, you know, his character, he like, he was, he was a jerk. It was all kind of like an influenced by his abusive dad, so you can't really blame him as much, you know, so that's why I do, you know, sympathise with his character. Bob, yeah, he was a nice guy, but he was just, you know, he wasn't the most um, relatable character or things like that. It's sad, his death was still sad, don't get me wrong. Oh man, this season. I ain't crying, okay? You know, when people were gonna like, ch -ch -ch, you know, like Beckman was breaking everyone's bones and stuff. I had a feeling one of our main characters was gonna get severely injured. Not killed, because they're not gonna kill him off just like that, you know? But, like, but severely injured. And that's exactly what happened with Max. She escaped it in episode 4, and then in the last episode, going and asking to get, you know, um, to go under that curse again and it happens and this time it doesn't go exactly according to plan she almost dies so she's permanently blind you know it managed to do that before Elle saves her and wow I was convinced for a moment she was gonna die you know she like her bones were starting to snap all of them all her limbs got broken and she went into a coma it kind of feels like that's where the um, it ended off this season you know like her in, in a coma and they don't know if she's gonna wake up or anything it feels a lot like Cobra Kai, um, you know, season 2 when Miguel fell from the stairs. So yeah, but the actual death was, um, Eddie, man. Eddie Munson. That was, in... they kind of foreshadowed it throughout, like, volume 1 as well. Like, he always said, outside of D&D, I am no hero. But, you know, here, he actually was a hero. He, instead of, like, crawling through the gate, you know, the, the one where you, um, they had, like, the, the rope or whatever, um, whatever you want to call it, I'm not sure what it is, it's like sheets or something. You have Dustin on the normal side, right? Earth side? I mean, they're both on Earth, right? It's like a parallel version of it. So let's just call it, you know, Hawkins and the, the other ones. No, we're gonna go with Earth, alright? Let's go with Earth and um, the Upside Down, as it is called, you know? So he's like on the normal side of Earth, so Eddie's on the Upside Down, and the Demobats are like breaking through the door of his, you know, trailer or caravan, and instead of going up there and then following them and like leading them into Hawkins, right, to kill so many people, it's a swarm, you've seen it in the trailers and the clips and, you know, everything, and instead of like risking the lives of several people in Hawkins who are trying to kill him, Instead, he cuts the rope with this beer he has, so nobody can come into the upside down from there. And he runs out on his, and goes out on his bike, and has the swarm chasing him. And eventually, when they knock him off it, instead of running and probably getting killed in a chase, then he stops and decides to fight and go out swinging. You know, and it's so sad. And like he's remembering all the things he said about him not being a hero, and here he actually gets to play and be the hero in an epic you know, conclusions to him. And he was such a lovable character. And then they just kill him so brutally, he just bleeds out. How Steve would have died had they not saved him, right? Dustin was too late to save him because he broke his leg, but probably for the better, because he, he, if he had caught up, he probably would have died too with him. Ah, it's just sad, man. Really sad for him, because he was such a nice, such a lovable character, you know? And he, he's died for the town, basically. He died for Hawkins, who didn't care about him. And even after that, they didn't learn the truth, at least not yet, in season 4 they never learned the truth about him being innocent and also being a hero. But another death that most people are kind of satisfied with, but actually I think it's kind of the opposite. Um, so Jason dies, so after um, Max, right, she uh, is killed, 
that almost, you know, she, her heart stops for a minute or something, yeah, that's what Luca says, so she died for a minute, and there were four kills from in that type of way from Vecna, right, you have um, Chrissy, you have Fred, and you have Patrick, and then her, even though she lived, she died clinically for a minute, and that's all it took for this thing, so they mention in, uh, like, episode 8 or something, four chimes, four gates are being made, and four kills four seasons so there's something going up here once the fourth kill was made then was the fourth gate and then they all intercepted you have um you have the lake one meeting with the road and the trailer they all intercepted in like the center of the town somewhere like that and it was like a huge shockwave it looked like lava and the one from coming from the house it ripped through patrick because he had well, got knocked out by lucas and when he was just coming to all he saw is like this thing start to form and it r actually rips through, you'd think it would just go under him but no, like the vines actually move through him, blackness spreads around him like charred almost and he's alive and everything, he's still alive and he, you can see his ribs start to go and they just casually pan just past him as you can hear his scream echo and it's just, it's very disturbing, it's chi- punch. Spine chilling. And I think he didn't deserve it, though most people would say he does because, you know, he was kind of an antagonist. But he wasn't really a bad guy. Sure, he was like um, a bit like the way he was going about, you know, um, avenging Chrissy. But he, he was a good person, you know? Literally, you could, the speech he was making, it was not like a false speech in the, t when, in the town hall. And he, he died, like, brutally as well. And he, I don't think he deserved that because he was a good person. He wasn't. He was also trying to stop Vecna, or the devil, or whatever he thought. He thought he was trying. He was rid of the evil, but he was, he was just going after the wrong person for it, and he paid brutally. So now on to another death that I also feel a bit mixed about. Um, it's generally not a sad death, but others could feel weird because it's like a big character, right? So as we see in Volume One, Brenna returns, and um, later in Episode Eight. Um, first episode back in, he gets killed, and it's in like a very generic way almost. Um, the helicopter that we've been seeing in the trailers that L crashes, yeah, just before that happens, um, it actually, there's a sniper in there, and it shoots Brenner down several times. He withstands the bullets, carrying Eleven out of there, because they want to kill her, right, the government, because they think she's responsible for the deaths that Vecna is actually doing. And um, he's just shot multiple times in the arm, in the leg, in the back, and the back one rips through his chest as well. And eventually, uh, when he's like dying and bleeding from his mouth and stuff, and he's on the ground, L doesn't seem to have too much sympathy for him. At first she does. He, even on whilst dying, he's like lying and saying that he everything he did was to protect her and what he thinks was best for her. We know that isn't really true, he didn't really value her like as a human being, as more of a, of a test subject, and that's why he valued her so much. But, you know, he's just very manipulative and causing, making her believe that he really does care deeply about her, but he doesn't, so that's not the case. All he asks before dying is if she can tell him that she understands what he's saying, that he does care about her, that He's always wanted to protect her, and she doesn't give him that satisfaction. She walks away, just says a goodbye, Papa, with a cold stare. And his hands, he's reaching out, but he can't even move. They just drive away in that Argyle's um, van. He just slowly dies, and it's it's a bit harsh, isn't it, even for Brenner? So yeah, we just killed him off like that, and it's just... Alright, cool. The ending is quite crazy. It's like, um, you know, the end of the world, now, like really end of the world. You have all the four gates, you know, opening up something. So it's making, um, um, at the very end, you see all those particles that are in the upside down, right? Like where it's all cold and everything. They start like just fading out of nowhere, like from the sky. And like the, uh, the light, red lightning and the black clouds just start forming over the skies of Hawkins. And uh, yeah, that's basically where we leave off. It's like a bit of a cliffhanger-ish, but it's basically just giving us the idea that Hawkins, the world, is no longer safe. It's no longer alone. The upside down dimension has into has bled into ours. So yeah, there is definitely lots to talk about. I don't know if I'll do like um, breakdowns and theories. I mean, it's not like um, dedication stuff, you know, like 
to like Jurassic franchise stuff and Camp Cretaceous I gotta talk about season 5. That's the end of this review. Thank you guys so much for watching and if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you never miss another video. With that being said, I'll see you guys next time.